Hello everyone, this is part 5 of how to make Plants vs Zombies in Scratch. In this video, I'll be adding lawn mowers and a game over screen. I'll also be making various improvements to the game, such as fixing the layer ordering, and also making it so that the zombie hit flashes work better. If you haven't seen parts 1 through 4 yet, check them out, links are in the description below. But anyways, let's get started. So first things first, let's add a lawn mower. So in all of the Plants vs Zombies games, we have lawn mowers in the front of the house, which sort of serve as a last line of defense. So once a zombie touches a lawn mower, then the lawn mower goes ahead and mows all of the zombies in that lane. Once the zombie reaches to the end of the lane, then the game ends. So to add in our lawn mowers, first go to the starter project, and then drag the lawn mower sprite into your backpack. And now in our project, let's open up our backpack and then drag the lawnmower sprite into our game. And if I show the lawnmower, then we have our first lawnmower right over here. So when the game starts, we want to create five of these lawnmowers at each of these lanes. So to do so, let's go to events and drag a windfly clicked. And let's first hide the original sprite. And then I'm going to go to control, drag a repeat, and I'll do repeat 5. And now inside of this repeat, let's create a clone of myself, and we want these lawn mowers to be on each lane. And keep in mind, we have a list of all of the lane Y positions. So we can just put the lawn mowers on each of these positions. So I'm going to go to motion and drag a go to XY block, drag it before the create clone of myself, and for the X position, Let's do something like negative 238. And for the Y position, let's go to variables and drag an item of block. And we want each lawn mower to have a different lane number. So let's go to variables and create a variable called lane num and then select for this sprite only and click OK. Now when the flag is clicked, let's first set lane number or lane num to 1. And then at the end of the repeat, let's change lane num by 1. And then let's drag lane num inside of here. And make sure that this is item lane num of lane y positions. And I'm also going to drag a when I start as a clone. Then I am going to show the lawnmower clone. Okay, so now if we just try it out, then as you can see, we have five lawnmowers. And each of these lawnmowers are in a different position because each lawnmower has a different lane num from 1 to 5. And it might make them go down a bit, so I'll just do item lane num of lane y positions minus something like 7. Alright, now they should be slightly shifted downwards, just like that. Cool. And now one thing you might notice is that once we click the green flag, the clones aren't spawned in immediately, because as you can see, there is some delay, and you can see each of them appearing one at a time. But we don't want that tiny delay. So instead, we can go to My Blocks and create a new block. I'll just call this something like Initialize. And then make sure to click Run Without Screen Refresh, and then click OK. And now, let's drag all of this inside of Initialize and drag initialize under the wind flag clicked. So now if you try it again, once we click the green flag, then all the lawn mowers spawn all at once, just like that. And you can't see them spawning in. So next up, we want the lawn mowers to start moving once it touches a zombie. So inside of the when it starts a clone, after we show it, let's go to control and drag a forever loop and check if, go to sensing, touching, zombie. Then we want to go from the left side of the screen to the right. So we want to go to control and then drag a repeat until block. And then go to operators, grab a greater than, and then go to motion and drag an X position. So repeat until X position is greater than something like 238 which is the right side of the screen. Then we want the lawn mowers to start moving to the right. So we can just do change X by something like six. 
And once the lawnmower reaches the right edge of the screen, let's just delete the clone. So right over here. So now I'm just going to test it by spawning in a few zombies quickly. So I'll just wait 0 seconds to immediately spawn that zombie. And I'm also going to make the zombies move super fast. So I'll just change X by, let's say, negative 12, just to make them go really fast. And let's just try it out. The zombies are going to move really fast, just like that, just for testing. And the lawnmowers work. Awesome. Now one issue is that since the zombies sort of go across two of these lanes because they're tall, we have two lawnmowers going at the same time which is incorrect, because we only want this lane's lawnmower, for example, to go, and not the top lane as well. So how do we fix this issue? Well, inside of the lawnmower sprite, we can't check if touching zombie anymore. Instead, we have to compare the zombie's X position with its own X position, and make sure that the zombie's lane is the same as its own. So inside of the if, let's remove this, and go to operators and drag an and, and let's grab a lesser than, let's put it on the right, and let's go to variables, and check if item of lane number, so keep in mind, this lawnmower's lane number is 1, this lawnmower's lane number is 2, this lawnmower's lane number is 3, and so on. So if the furthest zombie's x position of that lane is less than the lawnmower's own x position, which means that once the zombie goes past this lawnmower, then we want the lawnmower to do all of its stuff. And we also want to first check if there's even a zombie in that lane. So if item lane number of for this zombie's x is not equal to nothing. So if there's a zombie in that lane and that for this zombie's x position is less than the lawnmower's X position, then that means the lawnmower is touching the zombie and it's going to go forward. So let's try it out. So once we have these super fast zombies coming in, then the lawnmower moves forward just like that. Awesome. And for some reason, it seems like the lawnmowers are moving. So inside of the zombie sprite, let's make sure to put all of this code under the win flag clicked. So that should fix the problem. All right. And now everything should be fine. Cool. As you can see, just that lane's lawnmower is moving forward. And if we try it again, then no lawnmowers are randomly moving forward. And it looks good. And one thing is that the zombie touching isn't super accurate. So we want it to be a bit more accurate. So inside of the lawnmower, let's make the lawnmower move once the zombie touches it a bit earlier. So we can do X position plus something like 30. And now if we try it again, then the zombie is going to touch over here. And then the lawnmower is going to move forward. So it's a bit more accurate. And if we try this with normal speed zombies, so I'll change these back to our original speed. And now once the zombie approaches a lawnmower, then it moves, just like that. Awesome. All right, now we want the zombie to disappear once it touches a lawnmower. So inside of the zombie sprite, I'm going to go to my blocks and create a new block, and I'll just call this check for lawn mower, and then click OK. And now inside of here, we want to delete the zombie clone once it touches the lawn mower from its own lane. And now keep in mind, we only want this zombie to be destroyed from this lawn mower. We don't want this lawn mower to touch this zombie and then destroy this zombie. So to make sure that only this lane's lawnmower destroys this zombie, let's go inside of the zombie sprites, and I'm going to go to control, grab an if, and then inside of here, delete this clone. And now I'm going to go to the lawnmower sprite, and then go to variables, and I'm going to create a new list. And I'll call this lawn 
mowers X, and then click OK. Now inside of the wind flag clicked, I'm going to delete all of lawn mowers X, and inside of initialize, I am going to add the X position of the lawn mower to lawn mower X, and put it inside of here, right after the go to X Y block. And now inside of the when I start as a clone, I'm going to grab a replace item of block and replace item of the lane number of lawnmower X with its own X position. And in the end, once the lawnmower reaches the end of the screen, right before it gets deleted, let's replace it with negative 999. Okay, so now if we just try it out, then right now, we have the X position of all of these lawnmowers to be negative 238, which is their starting position. And once a zombie touches a lawnmower, then that lane's lawnmower will now update just like that, as the lawnmower goes forward. And once the lawnmower disappears, then it's going to change to negative 999. So now let's see this lawnmower. Keep in mind this is for lane 2, so this one. It's moving, and the X position is updating, just like that. Cool. And just like how we checked for the positions in the furthest zombie X inside of the zombie sprite, we want to check for the position of the lawnmower X. So let's check if item of lawnmower X is greater than the zombie's X position then we are going to delete the zombie clone. And I'm going to go to operators and grab a minus, and let's do minus 20 from the zombie's X position, just to make the collision a bit more accurate. And now let's actually use this block. So inside of here, let's check for lawnmower. All right, now let's try it out. Just like that. Cool. Now I'm going to hide the list, and let's check it out for these two zombies. So this works with multiple zombies, just like so. Awesome. And if we have tons of zombies on the screen, so I'm going to wait like maybe one second for each zombie spawn, then everything is still going to work. All right, and once these zombies touch the lawnmower, then all the zombies in that lane are going to disappear. Just like that. Cool. Next up, we want the game to be over once a zombie reaches the edge of the screen. So pretty much when there's no lawnmowers in a certain lane, and then the zombie reaches the end, just like that. So to do so, we can simply go to the zombie sprite and over here, once the zombie reaches the edge of the screen, then let's go to events and let's broadcast a new message. I'll just say game over and then click OK. And I'm also going to stop all. Now we want to create a game over screen. So I'm going to go inside of the ready set plant sprite, go to costumes, I'll create a new costume and I'll just drag a square over here, and I'll just write some text saying game over. And I'm going to improve this screen later on, but for now, I'm just going to have this simple screen just like that, and I'll call this game over screen. And now inside of the code, I'm going to grab a when I receive game over, then I'm going to show switch costume to game over screen set size to 100%, and also go to front layer. And that should be fine. So let's try it out. So all of the lawnmowers are clearing out the zombies, and now we have no more lawnmowers. And once the zombie reaches the edge, then we show game over. Now one thing I want to change is that I want the zombies to appear on top of this plant selection screen. And also I want the lawnmowers to appear behind the zombies. 
when they run the zombies over. So let's make some changes to our layers. So inside of the plant icon sprite, I am going to set the layer of it to something that is greater than the zombies layer sprite. So right now, the zombies layer is 10. So I'll do a higher number than that. So I'll do something like 12. And then for the sun counter sprite, I'll also set it to 12. Also in the zombie sprite, I want to make sure that the zombies on the top lane appear below the zombies on the lane below it. So inside of here, I'll do set layer 10 minus the zombies lane. So the zombies in lane 1 are going to have the layer 9, zombies in lane 2 are going to have the layers 8, and then 7, and then 6, and then 5. So that should work out. And lastly, we want to add the layering to the lawnmower. So I'm going to go to the sun counter sprite and drag these two blocks inside of the lawnmower sprite. And for the set sprite layers, I'm going to make sure that the lawnmower is behind the zombie. But I want the lawnmowers to also appear on top of the plant. So, so I'll do one below 15. So let's do 14 for the lawnmower. And also, I want to decrease the size of the plants a bit. Um, so I'll do maybe 47 for the plant size. And now let's just try everything out. So the layering should now work just fine. And as you can see, the zombies are appearing on top of the plant selection screen. All right, now let's see the lawnmowers. And they appear below or under the zombies. It's a bit hard to tell, but it looks much better now. And now one last thing is that sometimes the flash animations don't appear once the pea shooters are hitting the zombies. So to fix that, let's go inside of the zombie sprite. And let's create a new variable. I'll just call this do flash animation. And then I'm going to select for the sprite only and then click OK. And now first off, once a zombie is hit by a P, we want to set do flash animation to yes right before it broadcasts the flash animation message. And when it receives the flash animation message, instead of this, we can do if do flash animation is equal to yes, then do the flash. And right after we want to set do flash animation to no. And also I am going to set do flash animation to no under the when I receive start game. And now the zombie should flash every single time it gets hit by a P, no matter what. So now it should work properly. Cool. So now I'm going to reset the zombie spawn times back to normal. And now we can do a bit of playtesting. All right, as you can see, we have our five lawnmowers added to our game. And once the zombie touches a lawnmower, then it's going to get run over, just like the actual Plants vs. Zombie game. Also, I'm purposely putting all of these sunflowers in these two lanes, just so we can leave these three lanes empty. And once the zombie touches it, then it gets run over just like so. Cool. And once the zombie reaches the edge without a lawnmower, then we have this game over screen. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too if you haven't already. In the next video, I'll be adding a zombie eating mechanic, where the zombies will start eating the plants once they get close to them. I'll also improve the collision system to make the game run much faster and have zero issues. But anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!